Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mohamed Hassan Ayaz and today we are looking at something mind-blowing. It's called A to UI or Agent to UI. Well, as you know, we are used to building static UIs. We design a form, we code it, and then we ship it. But what if your UI could adapt to what the user is asking exactly? What if an AI agent could send you the UI definition on the fly? And that is exactly A to UI, which allows UI to be streamed on the fly using an AI agent. It allows the generative AI to send you UI definitions securely and natively and we are going to of course use Angular to see how it works. But just before trying it out ourselves let's look at the demo. So here I'm trying to find a person called Casey. So I'm going to remove this Smith and I'll send this. Now you can see we are having this loader being shown here and then we are going to have a UI streamed and shown here. And there we go. You can see that the UI just came in. We have all the details here and all of this is part of a JSON that is available. And you can find the data here in the repository if you go to samples and agent ADK, contact lookup. And here you should be able to find a JSON which is contact data.json. And here we have the information, the names, the title, you know, um, the ID, calendar, etc., etc. So what their availability is, all the things are here and this is streamed back with a UI and this UI is not part of the Angular application itself. Now let's talk about the architecture itself. When the user tries to find a person, let's say Alex, the Angular application itself sends the request to the Python A2A agent. So we're running the A2UI agent with Python. So when this message is sent to the A2UI agent, it sends it further to Google Gemini API. We're using the 2.5 flash at the moment, but since now the Gemini flash 3 is out, you can also try that as well. So when it goes to Gemini, Gemini responds back with the data and the UI components to be used. Python essentially streams the A2UI JSON back to the Angular application. When the Angular application has retrieved all the JSON, then it passes the JSON to this A to UI renderer, which essentially looks up the component in a catalog. So our Angular application or this library, the A to UI renderer has already a catalog, a catalog of button, card, you know, date picker, all of these things are already there. So when it looks up which components are available in this Angular renderer, then it renders the native Angular widgets within the application and that's how it essentially works. So we're going to quickly copy the code from here or the link from here and then we're going to go to our terminal inside here, go to the folder where you want to clone this project and just do a git clone and essentially just paste it. You should have Node.js installed, you should have Python installed, and you should also have something called UV installed, which you can just install by pip install UV, if I remember it correctly, or just Google it and you can install UV. Once you have that, just CD into the project, so A to UI. I'm going to quickly open this in the editor as well, and then we are going to run the commands that are necessary as well. So this is the readme that we have right now. So what I'm gonna do is follow this step by step. So the first thing that we essentially need to do is run the Python agent. So if you look at the getting started, you need to clone this, you need to have a Gemini API key, so you need an API key for this project to run. And for that, what you could do is, you could go to your browser and then go to ai.dev. And when you go here, you can click this button called get API key, go here and generate a new API key. You can create a project or you can select an existing project. Once you have your API key, you just need to export it. And the readme explains how to do that as well. You just need to run this command, export Gemini API key, and then your Gemini API key. And then you can go to one of the samples. The sample that we are going to look at would be that context lookup inside of the restaurant finder. So I'm going to open a new tab here. Let's quickly go to samples. And here we have agent ADK. And here we have context lookup. So you CD into it. And then here you're going to just say UV run and then dot which means we are running this project via UV. Once you do this, it's going to install all the dependencies and then it's going to run the agent. And now you can see that this is running fine, so no errors whatsoever. Notice that the URL is this one, which is 10,003. And now we are going to open a new tab and run the Angular application. So open a new tab or a new terminal. And here you need to go to, first you need to enable that renderer. So you need to go to renderers and here you have lit because the angular application uses some lit components that's why we are going to use this so here you need to run npm install and npm run build 
So you can build the project or build the render just like this. And you can see the packages have been installed and we have the library or the render built as well. Now you can go out. So cd dot dot slash dot dot slash. And here you can go to samples and then client angular. So once you go here, you need to also run npm install. So we are installing all the packages required by the Angular application. And if you go to the project, you can see all of this here as well. When you go to samples, agent, ADK, you can see all these options, context lookup, orchestrator, restaurant finder, risk charts, all of these are here as well. But then on the client side as well, which is the front end, we have Angular and Lit and in Angular, the projects we have all these examples like a to a chat canvas we have contact gallery orchestrator etc we are looking at the contact one right here now that we have installed this what we are going to do is we are going to run the contact project so you can run it via npm start dash dash and then space contact this is important to put it exactly like this so you can run this and when you look at the package json for this angular folder you can also see the commands here so you can look at this start command and essentially whichever project you give afterwards is going to be used with ng surf now there's one thing that you need to fix in this project, but before fixing that, I'm gonna show you what happens. So if I go to my browser now and go to localhost, you can see that this is working here. If I go here and say Alex and try to just find it, let's see what happens. It's going to load it, but if I go back to my terminal now, and go to the Python side of it, everything looks good. But if I go to the Angular side of it, you can see this particular error. So we have an error right now in the Google repository, but I've already created a pull request for this to fix this. What happens is that maybe there was a copy paste. So we have localhost 10,002 being referred from the contact project, whereas it should be 10,003. So we are going to fix it ourselves for now until this pull request is solved, or maybe you don't even need to do it if this is already solved by the time you're trying this out. So you go to Angular project, and then you go to contact source and here there should be server TS and in here we can just find local host or 10,002 and you can see it right here so we are going to replace that with three and just save it and now you can see that our angular application reloaded so I'm gonna go to my browser now and I'm gonna go to local host and now we are going to try this again so if I just send let's say Alex here send it and we can see our terminal now so you can see the terminal has no issue right now with the query Alex before it was an error. Now we are going to look at some other things as well. But before that, I want to tell and give you a disclaimer that I've changed some things in the code to make the UI more dynamic and also uh, more user friendly. For example, the link now actually works better. So you can click this and it would open the native mailing application if it's Gmail or Outlook, whatever you have. But I could now go and click this follow. And when I do so, it's going to essentially go to my Python here. And if I go to the Angular side of it, you can also see that we have this text query, Alex, and then we got this user action, which is called follow contact. If I go back to the Python side of it, this was the action. So here you can see that we have to show a contact card with this follow message. And here I also added some things. So we actually see the name of the person. This was not there in the repository before. But if I go to my browser now, you can see successfully followed the contact Alex Jordan. Now I can go back to the profile. And now from here, I can also click this message here. So if I click this, now it's triggering another action. So if we go to our terminal now, you're going to see that on the Angular side, we now have this user action called send message and we are going to also retrieve the JSON UI for this. Now, if I look at the Gemini side of it, you can also see there are so many things going on here, but this is the important part. So the action message is your message has been sent to Alex. And if I go to the browser now, you can see here it says your message has been sent to Alex Jordan. Now in the repository, there were some issues with the icons. So I fixed that as well. But here you can see the UI is completely dynamic based on the data that's being provided. And let me show you how you can even make this more dynamic. For example, if I go to the code now, you're going to see that we have this file called contact data.json so here we have inside the adk contact lookup and here we have contact data.json now if i go to my code you can see that we have this json which contains all the contact details so here we have calendar image url email mobile all of those information but what if i just added a property here and that would reflect in the change in the ui now let's try to add another property here for example for alex here i'm going to add this property which is favorite framework and i'm just going to save this and i'm also going to add something for casey as well which is the second person here so we are going to add something like a github 
URL, for example. And for now, I'm just going to add mine here. So I'm going to say HTTPS github.com slash SNIS right here. Now let's quickly save this. Now, in order to make it possible for us to have the UI updated, I have made some changes to the renderer and also to the Python side of it. For example, I'm showing you now the Google's anti-gravity because I'm not really good at NeoVim to have the difference shown so far. But here you can see that I've added this statement here that if there are additional important fields present, you must add a new row to the info rows column. And in here I'm saying with the link icon for URLs and star for others. So if the data JSON contains any additional properties, if that's a link, we are going to see a link or we are going to see a star icon with the information. So that's really important. And this is the prompt builder Python file, which is used by the Google ADK. So this is inside samples agent ADK contact lookup, which in short means that our front end application is right here and the back end right now or the Python side of it now is able to adopt to the UI and add additional information. So it's a combination of both the front end and the back end. So here when I send this information for Casey where we added the GitHub URL, let's see what happens. And there we go. You can see that we now got Casey and we have an additional link right here. So we do have the link icon right here. We do have the link right here as well. If I click it, it opens into a new tab, which basically directs to my GitHub account and uh, a quick shameless plug. If you like my work and my GitHub repositories, make sure to give a follow and join the 1400 plus people who are following me on GitHub and looking at my work. With that said, we have the possibility now to add dynamic information just based on the JSON data and no code has to change in the UI once we have set up this dynamic behavior in our Python agent and also the front end to make it possible. Now, if I go back and try to search Alex instead, let's see what happens. So remember, in our JSON, we have added for Alex a favorite framework. So we need to see this Angular right there. And now when the data comes back for Alex, you can see that we have a favorite framework right here which is Angular, and this is shown by this star sign. As I mentioned, I fixed some things in this A2 UI repository, which I will create a pull request on. So you will be able to test exactly the same behavior. And it also includes things like making sure we have the right icons being loaded with Google material icons, and that the icon is actually using the correct names. For example, instead of using the camel case names for the icons, it's actually using the snake case. But regardless, we have all this information and I can just keep adding information to the JSON and it automatically figures out what to do with that. Let's try one little example before we wrap up the video. So for example, for Alex, let's say we also add another location. So we are going to say meetup place and I hope that I've written it correctly. So I'm going to save this now and quickly go to the Python side and just going to refresh this or rerun this. All right, now let's go to the browser. And in here, I'm going to try to find Alex, which should have the meetup place. So let's see what comes up. And as you can see right now, it doesn't show the meetup place. And that is because our Python agent is not capable of doing that. So we are going to change our AI agent to make this part work that whenever you give a location, or a place, then it shows it with this location icon. And if there's something related to date or time, then we also see this in calendar format. So now I've opened Google anti-gravity and here I've said that update the AI agent side of things to look at the properties that represent date, time or location and show on the card with the calendar or map icon respectively. Now it has gone forward and it essentially gives us this summary where it will look at the calendar today icon or location on icon for location fields, link for URLs and star for other fields. So we have a plan. Let's quickly open. We can quickly see that. I already know since I've modified the files before. So the G icon is the one that applies the Google symbols. And essentially this plan looks good to me. So let's proceed. Now, as you can see that this has made some changes. And when I open the diff of what has been changed here, you can see that we have more instructions. So use this icon if the value represents a date, time or a schedule and use the location on icon if the value represents a location or a place. Now our agent is dynamic and capable. So let's try it out. So I'm going to go and restart my Python agent. And now in the browser, let's try to find Alex again. And there we go. You can see already that we have San Francisco mentioned as the meetup place. I did not have to change anything in the front end code. I just updated my AI instructions. Now let's add one more thing. So I'm quickly going to go to the JSON here and here with Alex, I'm also going to add one more property. Maybe we can call this 
first morning coffee sip and here let's quickly make that 7 a.m and now i'm going to save this now in the browser let's try to find alex again and there we go now you can see that we have the 7 a.m as the first morning coffee sip available as well now this is amazing as you can see i did not have to change any front end code so far and if you want to dive deep into how all of this works i would recommend looking at the adk contact lookup and you can see what this prompt builder does essentially and on the front end side you can also look at the application itself so if you look at projects contact here we have all the components but even more so if you go to the renderer side you will see what happens behind the scenes for example the dynamic component.ts is a really interesting file to look at the catalog ts file which defines what a catalog entry looks like and if you go to the catalog folder inside renders angular you can see all the components we have audio button card checkbox all of these things including the icon that you can see i updated all of them live inside this folder so feel free to dive more into it or if you want me to dive more into it let me know in the comments and i will think about creating a video as well and let me remind you that this is the future of building heavy complex and data-driven applications. You build a catalog system inside the renderer and your AI agent automatically decides what UI to show to the user intelligently. Anyways, let me know how did you find this video? Did you find it useful or not? I would love to hear your thoughts about it and would reply as soon as I can. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more AI and Angular content. As always, happy coding. I'm going to see you next time.